or paid $59,663. That's a $4,420 difference more, and that's because I was a member of Ask Me or the union at that time. Seems a little unfair to some of the members here or some of the employees here at Northampton County that we were paid less. In the past seven years, uh, employees in the area have only seen one step increase, which occurred in 2016. Some employees who have been here for years did not even receive a step because they were maxed out on their scale. And in 2016, those employees who have been here for years and are currently ready to retire received a $1,250 stipend in 2016 on the top of their current step. step. It is also interesting to point out that for a four-year experience officer, one of which is sitting here with us today, is only $1,820 more than a new hire today. Uh, that would be in the difference in the scale from a 1A to a 2B because she has never received a step increase since 2016. Hmm. We only asked what is fair uh, and that the council consider retroactivity back to January 22, 2019. We choose that date because it was when we were released from ASME and of, this, of the salaries this year on the new scale. And that this matter we looked into uh, come up with the sc uh, scale or a salary that reflects the hard workers of the county courts here in Northampton County. I thank you for consideration. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate uh, what uh, you guys do for us, the county. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Chairman, a uh, quick uh, point and a, and a somewhat of a complaint. Um, we have been discussing the uh, civil service and, and how we exit that. For those of you that are CCAP voting members, that is a resolution that uh, can be voted on, and I urge you to support uh, the CCAP resolution. Uh, the other question I had, and uh, maybe this is for HR, but our website, is it necessary that we advertise each open position for nursing individually by where it belongs. I, if you, there's like 11 pages of job openings and the vast majority of them are either LPN or CNA and it's paging through that, I, I, you know, I, I did find out that we're advertising for law clerks but I had to page through um, about six pages worth of, of uh, openings for uh, LPN and CNA. Why can't we just advertise once for the position of CNA and once for LPN and once for RN uh, rather than have, you know, 11 web pages of job openings? I think that's something we should look into. Thank you. Uh, or even... Um, can she answer that? She's here. Uh, yeah, please. It, you, you, you can come up and, and uh, respond to that. Absolutely. Uh, maybe you could bundle them and put them in and just say there's 11, but just bundle them yeah, you know, if, they're, if they're similar. Right. Why can't it just be advertised CNA uh, and then the job description, well, LPN? Is that a union thing or? In fact, uh, it used to be advertised that way. We went to the more specific way of doing it at the request of some folks at Graysdale who seemed to think that we might get more uh, internal applicants for certain positions if they knew where the opening was. Um, we've gotten a little bit more specific with positions in the last year, year and a half so that you know we now have the positions numbered in such a way that we can identify whether the nurse is on say Northeast 1 or Tower 3 for example. Um, we can certainly go back to the other way. I've seen all those listings on the website too and yes there are many many nurses, LPNs, and even aid positions like that. Um, it's hard to fill those positions and I think they end up getting reposted quite frequently and that's something that's concerned me. I don't think we want to repost as frequently as we do. Um, so I'm definitely willing to take a look at that and see if we can find a way to make that more efficient. I, Can't you just I would urge you to. Can't you just reorganize that with an LPN and then have it go to another web page where all of them are listed if that's what you want to do so that the initial page, so that you have like sort of like a hierarchy. You know, so it's listed LPN, you click on the link and then I'll take you to another web page if that is what, you, in fact, that what you want. Mm -hmm. But um, law clerk should come before LPN, shouldn't it? I, I would. Why isn't it I would think so, except I think there's a rule where things that are just initials Go oh, first. Prior? I'm not real sure. Okay. Well, I'm just I'm just speaking to the um, 
navigation. I'm just speaking to the unwieldiness yeah. of someone who wants to find other positions uh, that would have to click through 11 pages, right. uh, many of which are, are repeats. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Yeah. Hackman? I'll mention that to the folks at Graysdale, and we'll see what we I think we can do better. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure about, uh, um, Councilwoman Zerinsky, I'm not sure about what you're suggesting. I like the idea, but I really don't know all the uh, capabilities of our NeoGov posting system. So I'll find out what we can do. It but seems like a design issue that you could, if it's web-based, I mean, it's just adding another page to the um, hierarchy of page management. We can definitely look into it. I think somebody with far more computer knowledge than me would, would know how to do it. Well, that, that would well, probably be true of me <laughs> also. <laughs> Mr. Hackman, once, it's always good if you find an example of something and then give someone an example, you know. Oh, and sure. then they have no. it's like any I, navigation I, I understand what you're talking thing. about yeah, in any navigation window like a nav bar why you know, couldn't like, you have like yeah on the first click you get LPN and mm -hmm. then if you are interested click on that and go to the next page you do want to keep it simple though. the full openings mm -hmm. yeah. mr. Hackman Ms. Kelly, I, um, you said that it was changed because of the employees you've got feedback that they would has has that resulted in anything have you gotten more well responses? I would say Yes, we definitely do get more people applying for, if, if, if there's a unit that they consider to be a prime unit where an opening becomes available, say due to a retirement, oh yes, they will notice it. Those who are looking notice and jump right on it. Hmm. So we, if I'm not mistaken, I don't mean to interrupt, but this you can weave in maybe, don't we I, I know I'm going old school here, but don't we post the positions internally? Like, I, I mean, I know that it used to be yes. folks would know about openings before I did it one time because, I mean, they'd so and so's leaving, this one's going here, or they immediately go to those sheets that are usually well, everywhere that PSSU. We, and I'm just wondering right. to, to, if this is a thing, and I haven't really looked lately, as Mr. Kusick was mentioning. Um, but I'm just thinking if part of the problem was people inside wanting to know, and I realize they do want to switch if they have a certain amount of seniority, they can. But I'm thinking, if, if is the web page really their first place they're checking if you're already working at the facility? I, I, I don't know. It may I, not I be, be but they do have to apply through NeoGov to be considered for the position. Does the intranet that the county employees see is, I know it's a little bit different than the um, public version of the... The county website? Yeah, is the jobs on that too the same way, you think? Or just something to look at too, I guess, you, that, based on his point. If you go to the county website that's available to the public, you can find, um, you know, a heading that says employment or jo available jobs available, and that will direct you to where the jobs are posted. So you could follow the link. Yes. Um, okay. One question: are you, are you still at Gracedale? Are you still posting? They had a, they had a big board as you came through. The, the board thing. is still there. The board yes. is there. Board is is there. it still loaded with postings as it has been? I mean, there were. I would imagine it is. Okay. Um, that, I mean, that, that's the first, that's where yeah, a lot of people go to. That's first, right. Yes. And that would tell them, you know, what's available. But they do have to apply online in yes. order to yeah. make sure that all of their yeah. qualifications are considered in the process. I referenced the picture to Mr. Lott and Mr. McGee a while back on the, what that board looked like, how many postings mm -hmm. there were. It's quite large, yes. yes. It is. <laughs> Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. We're going to get started. Well, I don't know if you want to. We're going to get started with the uh, personnel requests from Human Services, Child, Youth, and Family. Children, Youth, and Families. <clears throat> the request of Sue Wondolowski, Director of Human Services. Please consider the following request to create five positions and eliminate one position as follows. Eliminating the following position, caseworker two, full-time, pay grade PS35, and create the following position classifications. Hmm. Caseworker manager two, full-time, pay grade HS42B, and two 
caseworker three, full time, 2.0, pay grade 37A, and two, caseworker supervisors, full time, 2.1, pay grade HS 38B. Attach, please find the calculations of the financial impact of this request. And Mr. Dolan, this is here at the so, mic. As you just mentioned, we, we are requesting four positions and one upgrade that have been approved by the governor's office and by the Office of Children, Youth, and uh, Families in Harrisburg. And all, all positions are 80% uh, funded by the, the, the state, and that is their, their daily salary, their pension, and their medical benefits are 80% paid for by the, uh, by the state. Uh, county puts in a 20% match. Now, I, I brought uh, my assistant administrator, Julie Bra Bader, along. Uh, she's going to explain the positions uh, to you. Reason for that, uh, I continue to mention, is that uh, I, I will be retiring, and I roughly have 122 working days left and 170 <laughs> calendar days left. So we're trying to give uh, Ms. Bader uh, experience uh, in presenting to council, so I'm going to turn it over to her. Hi. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Um, the supervisory positions and the case, county case manager two, in-house we call program director positions are required. Um, the state is changing the regulations so that it meets a four to one supervisory ratio instead of a five to one supervisory ratio. So the new two new supervisors would take our caseworker to supervisor ratio roughly to four to one. We'll need one supervisor somewhere down the road, but this will get most of our supervisors down to the four to one match. And then the new program director, Kate County case manager, we use them interchangeably, position would supervise the supervisors. And that brings their matches down to five to one across the board and not putting anybody over the, the um, into the sixth position. So that is why we are requesting those. Our county caseworker three position, we added one position last year to be a placement specialist with the hopes that they could also do the child abuse and need survey, um, CANS trauma assessment to children so we could find better services, more appropriate services. Um, with the additional numbers coming in and children that we're placing and cases that we have, she's been very busy doing placement looking, placement searching, placement paperwork so that we have medical assistance covered on time, everything else on time has not gotten to the assessments. So we have asked the state for a second position there. We did not realize how much that would help everybody when the caseloads are increasing at our agency and with, with the numbers coming in. So we're asking for that second position. The new position will actually do the placement request and the placement search. The current position that's there is already trained to do the CANS assessment. This will child abuse needs survey, um, trauma assessment for the children. We're hoping to get that up and running as soon as we fill that position should it be approved. And then the county caseworker two that we are eliminating and creating another county caseworker three position. We use our county caseworker threes as mentors for new casework staff. We have had roughly 30% staff turnover in the last two years, so our intake areas where we used to have 17 and eight years of experience, 17 and 18 years of experience, we now have two and three years of experience. We're looking for that second mentor staff to help settle the transition and moves in and out of our intake. We have added a new unit last year. So we went from 15 workers to 19 workers. And with just one mentor staff, when we have five or six vacancies in that program area, it's not enough to do the proper training of the caseworkers when they're coming in. That's why we're asking for that second upgrade. So with that, um, you know, that our turnover staff, our transition staff between Kevin's retirement with Pat's retirement and everybody else moving as we move caseworkers up to supervisors and caseworker transition out of our agency, which is the norm. Um, 
we're hoping to, to settle all of that down with the extra mentor staff. And the person being, the job being eliminated, that person's moving up? It's an <coughs> a, a upgrade from a caseworker to a caseworker three, right. yes. Mr. Warner? Um, first of all, thank you for, congratulations and thank you. I'll get congratulations later. <laughs> and I, I wish you well, okay? I, I know what you've been, done, gone through for the last uh, number of seven years, six years, whatever it's been. Um, this is funded 80%, most of it, by the, the state, correct? Correct. So I don't see any reason why we shouldn't move forward with it. That's my opinion. We, I know you need it. I know the people are needed, so uh, I'm all for this. Anyone else? Mr. Kuzik. Um, yeah, I reiterate uh, some of the points Mr. Werner made. Uh, I think this is necessary because of the Sandusky laws that we've struggled with now for some time. But my question is, we're adding four positions. How many vacancies are there now? Uh, we currently have 11 vacancies. <laughs> at, um, one is a supervisor level, one is a program specialist level, and we have nine caseworker positions currently. One of them is the empty caseworker two that we're trying to upgrade to the caseworker three that we have been holding vacant until we get a decision at this point. Okay, so I guess my concern is is that we have 11 vacant positions and we're creating four more. Um, I, I don't know if that makes sense to me. I, I would urge you to the, fill those other positions. Uh, is, is that part of the problem rather than the need for more positions? Between the state mandate of supervisor to caseworker ratio from five to one to four to one. It's part of a regulatory need as well as part of a, somebody to help these caseworkers be trained a little bit better and hopefully engage them so they do stay longer. Um, so it's a double, one, one is to create our, our regulations, one is to meet our regulations, and one, one is to help steady the stream of people leaving with more support from their supervisor. If I only have four workers instead of five workers with the new mandates, the new paperwork, with everything we have to go through, supervisors, when I started, used to go out in the field with the caseworkers. Supervisors today are like, I can't go out in the field because I have to click, click on this many buttons to get mm. cases closed at the state level. We're mm. trying to recreate allowing them to go out and that is why the state is recommending a lower caseworker to supervisor ratio. Ms. Baker. We're, we're hoping it's a retention issue, actually, because the supervisors are so overloaded that if we can get their workload down for the amount that they uh, have to, uh, all the paperwork that they have to do on a uh, real-time basis, that this will uh, take the pressure off them, say, like, I, 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 it'll take it away from them saying, I, I'm going to leave. The, the vacancies, to, on his point, so we didn't clarify what was vacant, right? Was it the lower level? Um, Nine are caseworker positions. Okay, so they're, case, they're not supervisor positions. Not at okay. this So level. you got to get the steering wheel going and then fill in. The, okay, right, right. I got and, and then your 90-day right of returns when we do promote. So. Yeah, this is also a funded mandate, unlike oh, yeah, some sure. of the other stuff we get hit Absolutely. with. So let's take the money, okay? Well, we, yeah. yeah, we appreciate you guys holding on to the ship here, and we're losing a lot of talent and trying to reorganize it and okay uh, mr. Heckman um, in this you know Ms. Bader or Mr. Dolan wants to jump in um, congratulations and you're moving on he and I had a brief chat I think he's I've urged him to become a gentleman farmer <laughs> up at Bushkill Township and uh, I've known him since he was kicking around ball at East Stroudsburg but anyway uh, Couple of questions, if, if, and you can help me with this either, either one. The eighty twenty, which I'm glad we still have, and I agree with what's been said. Do they still have this deal at the state though that they only do the, apply that towards the salary, other benefits that that they won't reimburse us for? So I mean, the part you can spend the eighty on that you allocate can only go towards the salary part. We were never allowed to. To they said, if you want to give your people benefits, that's on you. Yeah, I, I meant as you're moving along. So they changed the law. Yes. I don't know what it used to be, right, no. but currently, yes. It, 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 at one time, 
Uh, it doesn't mean it would affect usually because 20 percent, I mean, 80 percent is still 80 percent. I mean, we can use it on the salary, but there was a time when you could not apply any of that money to anything other than salary because they said each county is deciding what benefits they want to give. We're not going to get involved in that. Um, I mean, but I just, want, I just wondered, if, and that's all. So apparently you can use it for anything now. Yes, it's approved in a needs-based budget. And the benefits that you were talking about yes. are approved in the needs-based budget. When you see the budget, well, the budget we presented last year, and you see the budget again for this year, okay. we keep overhead benefits out of the calculation for regular benefits because other post-employment benefits are not, specifically not, allowable under the needs-based budget. So part of the reason we do that uniformly now throughout the budget is so we can track where that OPEP spending is and where it resides so we don't take more reimbursement than we're entitled to for those positions. And just to understand, I mean, you can ask Mr. Hammond, he would remember this. When we used these budgets, uh, I don't know, maybe Peg remembers, it, it was a thing where it was, we're not talking about retirees, I'm talking about employees. They were they were strict, and I mean Kevin, you know that. I, I, we'd sit down and do the budget, and they would say, "Okay." It wasn't that, no, I remember it. it wasn't yeah. that long ago. I'm right. Sure. I'm just saying. I mean, I, I I I we couldn't do it. Not that I'm just asking if it changed, and apparently it, had, it did. It has changed, so yes. I appreciate that. The other thing, Kevin, I wanted to ask you was um, uh, uh, with the eleven, and, and and I know this is another topic that was brought up a lot, and Mr. Kusick brought it up, and. I don't know how, how many conversations I had with Mr. Hammond when there were budget cuts about vacancies in children and youth or at Grace Dale and why are you, why in God's name are you coming in and creating new positions, Mr. Huckman, when you have all these vacancies? As you know, we had these discussions over the years. Um, isn't this, even if they're not created yet, uh, we're talking about some different types of, and also by the regulations, in, in some weird way, and I'm not going to speak for the state or the feds, but in a weird kind of way, by having created the position, even if you haven't filled it, in some ways you're fulfilling the mandate. Be because the position exists. If, if the position doesn't exist, you're not fulfilling part of the mandate. Correct. Okay. And, and it's, uh, if, if we ever have the, the fantasy that we're going to be 100% filled in children and youth. Walt Disney and died, it's, Kevin. Walt it's Disney not, died. It's not that just <laughs> with the turnover. It's just, it's just not yeah, Well, happen. they have his head frozen, but I don't know if he's coming back. Um, the thing is, uh, no, and, and that's true. I mean, I, I, my understanding at the time when I'd have these discussions with fiscal, and, and uh, fiscal would always be about dollars and cents, and they, they'd ask that, and that was a fair question. You have all these vacancies, and yet here you are asking for A, B, or C. And I, I'd say because the way the state and the Fed works and what we need, it, it's a different slotting situation. The other thing I want, and this is it, the caseworker threes, that was always a bone of contention many, for many years in the past. Um, how many caseworker threes do you have? And so their job now to be a caseworker three is, is, is like a mentor. That, do they carry a caseload as well? Yeah, our, our current caseworker threes carry a caseload. Okay. They also get any of the confidential cases that might be coworkers or families or somebody higher up in the county levels. Okay. So they take care of all of our confidential cases and they assist with the mentors. In our CPS intake area, we have two caseworker threes. That has helped the turnover in CPS so that we have not seen the turnover we used to never be able to fill CPS. Yeah. We now have caseworkers bidding into CPS. So the Child Protective Services with the numbered. In CPS, the caseworker threes are also the caseworkers that handle the fatality and the near fatality cases. We have one currently, well, we have two caseworker threes in CPS with 15 CPS caseworkers. We have one caseworker three in our general protective services, and right now we're up to 19 caseworkers. So we're looking to add to that and hope for the same stability that we had in the other side of intake. In our ongoing units, we have one caseworker three in the ongoing section. We have one on caseworker three in our permanency section. We have one caseworker three in our adolescent section. So each of those caseworker threes cover two units, which is eight, eight to nine workers, depending on the units. 
We have the caseworker three that I just mentioned, the placement specialist, that we're trying to get a second one. And we have one caseworker three that is in our quality assurance, and they actually go out to the vendors and do our vendor audits to make sure they're meeting program mandates, actually giving us the time that they say they're giving. There's case notes and case documentation. If we ever get audited, we can say we audited them and we have what we need. So we make sure our, they're not billing us fraudulently. You know, they're billing us and there's notes yeah. to back up everything that they're doing. Okay. So that's what our caseworker threes currently do. Good. And if I count that right, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And yeah. we're looking for a tenth. Okay, perennial question. I just thought of money. You said it was the last one. It was on that topic. <laughs> perennial, hey, at least I'm asking permission. Um, the thing is, uh, Kevin, as you leave, um, what is the outlook for paying children and youth caseworkers on a different pay scale or level than other caseworkers? Because until we resolve that, I mean, there's a lot of, there's tech stress, there's this, there's that. But I mean, I, I've been there, and I'm old enough that I can say it. If somebody gets mad at me, I really don't care. Uh, the stress and strain on a children and youth caseworker is far greater than many other caseworker classifications. Your turnover rates prove that across the state, the turnover rates prove that, particularly in counties like Northampton, third class and up. Um, do you see any potential? Well, I thought there was going to be potential with the Auditor General's report. Um, all the administrators were disappointed that that eventually just lost its steam. The mm. hope is, if you've followed the newspapers, the governor has created a committee uh, that is to look at vulnerable uh, people in the uh, Commonwealth, uh, both adults and children, and that report is due November 1st, and we are hoping, it's a very powerful group that he put together, we're hoping that that group finally gets the message to the governor that the salaries for children and youth caseworkers has to be raised. Because you're right, that's why all these people leave for the other divisions. They yeah. don't have to do the type of hard work, the being pushed around, the court work. Well, I'm sure you still have that exodus that goes on to this day. Right, so yeah. it could happen, but you know, I don't. <laughs> All right, Mr. McGee, thank you. I'm turning my mic off. All right, thank you. Uh, one more question for you. Uh, when would be the effective date of this, these positions, or is that to be determined? The state has given us permissions effective in our July 1st budget, so we passed that date. If you approve all these positions, once we get the sign off through county council, we still have to go back to civil service to actually create the positions and then have the job description approved, and then post and fill. Okay. And so we would be looking at October-ish. Um, uh, the outgoing uh, Mr. Dolan, civil service. Can I have a sound bite on that from you? What's your thoughts? What should the county be looking at moving forward? Uh, my sound bite, you, you might be surprised with it, but uh, again, I meet four times a year with all 67 children and youth administrators and the children, 14 or 15 of them that I am very close to them, and we sit around and talk, they say that it's probably one of the best things that they ever did, mm -hmm. that the, com the system, the civil service system, is so cumbersome that they um, couldn't wait to get out of it, and they are able to bring employees in much, much faster than through the civil service system, which takes weeks and weeks and weeks, and they can do it probably within a month. Wow. So the, the 14 or 15 administrators I know that have already switched have been very happy with the move. Thanks. Right. Anyone else? Okay. Um, can, I get a, uh, can I get a motion to move this to full council? Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have review of the 
Interest Arbitration Award for the Corrections Officers, in front of us. Uh, Interest Arbitration Award, Corrections Officer, dated July 31st, 2019. Please find and close Please find and close the Interest Arbitration Award in a short summary of its effects upon multiple articles of the existing collective bargaining agreement. <clears throat> the Interest Arbitration Panel has awarded the corrections officers the following pay increases. 2018, 75 cents per hour. 2019, 75 cents per hour. 2020, 2%. In addition to the panel award, an increase in the amount of the office, officer's shift differential from 65 cents per hour to 85 cents per hour. Council's approval is needed to implement the wage increase for the corrections officers. I am respectfully requesting that you approve my request that Council adopt a resolution to approve the pay increase set forth in the enclosed interest arbitration award for the corrections officer. County Executive. Uh, and then it goes through if you want to take a little bit of time and take a look at this if you didn't already in your email. And if you have any, there's also a copy of the uh, Pennsylvania Labor Relations Board case and the outcome of the arbitration. Mm -hmm. And if we have any questions or comments from the administration or from any, anyone else. Um, so we have absolutely no choice but to approve the, this is an award, an interest arbitration award, and we have absolutely no ability to reject it. I suppose if you did reject it, and um, I could not implement the changes to the pay scales so that there we would eventually be ordered to do so um, at great cost uh, to us. So um, I, I recommend that we go ahead and approve this and move forward. Thank you. Any other questions? It is what it is. Yeah. Just, just uh, I want to make one point because this always comes up. We always get compared to, to what they offer or start with in Lehigh County. Mm -hmm. Now. One, one more time, I, I, go, no, I go through this every time, and Mr. McClure, you know it. Mm -hmm. The way that they deduct for benefits is different than what we do. Correct. They pay a percentage of their benefit, and we charge a percentage of salary. Right. So it's a, not a fair comparison to, to just look at Lehigh County's salaries and say they pay more. Well, they take out more for health benefits mm -hmm. and, and and other uh, uh, benefits. So it, it's not a fair comparison. And if, if we would like to do that, I'd be more than happy to go to a percentage of the cost of the benefits if that's what AFSCME would like to do. So, so please, don't use Lehigh County as a comparison. It's not fair. And if you want to go with the same deduction, that, well, we can talk about that. So thank you. That's my two cents. <laughs> it just, just, just it comes up. I hear it from the public and from the employees when they look at Lehigh County. It's not an apples to apples comparison. I think so. we, I, I think we've analyzed it, and I, this will change now uh, with the award and with everyone coming into our health insurance. Not in the first year of the award, but in the second. Uh, roughly speaking, single people are probably better off in Lehigh County, but married folks and married folks with children are better off with us. And I think everybody's going to be better off with us now. So corrections folks in, North Ham in Northampton County are going to be better off than the corrections folks in Lehigh County when this, is fully when this award is fully implemented because the arbitrator gave the, ma the majority of the raise to people 13 years and newer with the county at one and they so they got one and a half percent more in this award than we offered them so mm -hmm. and, th and that was to deal with this whole notion that we can't recruit and retain so the folks who are 13 years and, and less with the county they're, they're doing much better than lehigh county mr oh. rinsky i yeah i just wanted to ask a question since uh peter did ask what was the background on this? Uh, how did this come about? 
And the corrections award? Yeah, what's the, he seemed to have like a little bit of a backstory. Right. That's, a, that's well, a, that's I, I think another, he's talking about something. That's yeah, the next that's one. Okay. That's yeah. the next that's one. That's the next one. We'll hold oh, off on that. We'll get yep. to that one. Okay, okay. sorry. Okay. Yep. Very good. All right. With any other questions or comments or two cents? Okay. Um, motion to move. Oh, I thought it was the motion. Mr. Heckman? I'll second that. Okay. All right. Now we're on to. Uh, <clears throat> Review of wage scale revisions. Oh. Department of Human Service employees and the court appointed professional employees. And that is in front of you mm. at this time. The, um, let's see, is it all one packet? It's, yeah. it's, it's all one packet, right? Okay, yeah, we'll break them up, but it's all, it's. Okay, yes it is. Okay, two different packets. Mr. Okay. Chairman, the human services, is that's pretty straightforward. Yes, right, right. Okay, that's next. We're going to do that one next, all right? Mm. All right, just making sure I got the right stuff. Wage scale revision to increase in state maximum. Uh, from Elizabeth Kelly, please find and close the memorandum prepared by Susan Wondolowski, Director of Human Services, and eight wage scales which were prepared by the Department of Fiscal Affairs. Essentially, these wage scales will replace the current wage scales, which had to be adjusted due to the most recent increase in the Pennsylvania maximum reimbursement rates, which became effective retroactively July 1st, 2017 and July 1st, 2018. As you will see, there are eight page wage, eight wage scales enclosed. Each one of them have, have been re revised to reflect the increase in Pennsylvania's maximum reimbursement rates for employee wages. These bargaining unit employees wage scale wage scales begin with PS and the non-bargaining unit employees wage scales begin with HS. I respectfully request that you approve my request that council adopt as, as many resolutions as are needed to approve the enclosed eight wage scales. All right, and it looks like we have them all in one. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. And they are in front of us, and you can take a minute to take a look at them. And if you have any questions, Ms. Wondolowski is in the audience. And basically, it's just that we're following the state mandated uh, wage scale. So, with no other questions or comments, can we get a motion to move the full council? Okay. Uh, second. Move to full count. All right. Which brings us to the court appointed professional employees. 2019 wage scale. Court professional employees. Please find and close a wage scale, a new wage scale that the Financial Affairs Department has prepared for the court's professional employees. These are the employees who recently petitioned the Pennsylvania Labor Relations Board for decertification of their bargaining units. The Pennsylvania Labor Relations Board issued a NICI order of decertification. NICI, thank you. NICI. NICI order of decertification. That's old Latin. On January 22, 2019, NICI. 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 The employer, employees are no longer represented by Ask Me Local 1040. As you will see, there is one wage scale enclosed. The wage scale reflects the wage scale reflects the county executive's recommendation that you approve a two percent wage increase for these employees, which parallels what the other non-bargaining employees received in 2019. I'm respect, respectfully requesting that you approve. This request that council adopt a resolution to approve the enclosed wage scale. And it is attached, and, and uh, you take a look at it. I want to take a look at it. Um, and uh, at this point, I'll open it up for questions or comments, or if the administration wants to add anything. We heard from uh, one of the workers, two of the workers tonight. All right. 
Question, um, Mr. Cousin. Mr. Chairman, I, I just uh, looked it up. Uh, according to the to our records that I'm looking at, the contract with AFSME expired on uh, De uh, December 31st, 2018, right? So the end of last year. Um, I, I heard you know, the argument uh, from the employee, and, and I can't help but agree with them. I believe that this should be uh, retroactive to January 1st of this year. So um, I, that would be my suggestion. I'm not on the committee, but um, the contract expired, and I would guess they haven't had a raise since the contract expired. So I, my sense is that they would be career service. They were out of a contract at the end of last year. It's been resolved. I don't see why it shouldn't be retroactive to January 1st. Just my opinion. That's that. It's interesting. I'm, I'm a little surprised at your uh, view there. I, I can speak to that a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, the Labor Board's NICI order of decertification doesn't just happen on its own impetus from the Labor Board. A petition has to be filed by the employees in the bargaining unit. They have to obtain enough signatures to show that they have at least a 30 percent interest in decertification, and they prove that to the Labor Board by signing cards and handing them in with their petition. Um, the employees did this. Uh, the Board accepted their petition. And they requested a list from me of employees in the bargaining unit. I provided that list. Uh, they scheduled an election. We didn't end up having the election because AFSCME Local 1040 uh, disclaimed interest in representing the union. Um, but that didn't occur until after January. Um, it is my understanding that the employees met with our administration, I'm talking about the McClure administration, and, you know, discussed the fact that if they waited to decertify, they could get what we offered basically all of the other uh, bargaining units, the step increase effective 1-1-2018, and then a 2 percent, uh, well, the, two, the step increase effective the first year, 2 percent the next year and 2% the following year. That was the pattern that we were trying to achieve with all of our bargaining units. Um, the employees chose not to go that route and went forward with the decertification petition. When they came to us, um, it, it wasn't really for a 2% increase. They wanted to be moved from the grade and step that they're on in the salary scale they used when they were in collective bargaining to the same grade and step at the, on the career service salary scale. Mm -hmm. We priced that. It would have cost $356,000 approximately and would have represented a bigger expenditure of increases than any other employees in the county got through, yeah, a year, through collective bargaining or any other means. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Barron can probably explain more about the true cost of that, but we just priced it for what it would cost for one year. Huh. Um, it would continue to have that cost year after year, as he points out over there. So uh, the other thing that was, was we tried, we looked at, well, what would happen if we just moved the court employees to the closest grade and step to what they're making now on the career service pay scale so that we could get them into a track where they would be in line with career service pay and benefits. Well, as it turned out, that had a cost, too, um, of approximately $55,000. But worse than that, it would have been pretty inequitable. Um, for some reason, uh, the higher you were on the pay scale, the more distance there would have been between the closest step and where you are now on, mm -hmm. on career service. So some employees would have gotten like a 3000 and some dollar raise for the, the year that this adjustment would be made, and others would have gotten a $9 raise. So we didn't want to do that because it would have, to us, it seemed inequitable to go that route. 
So what we settled on was doing a percentage increase. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason we decided to go retroactive to July 1st was, you know, we felt that the employees had made a choice. Uh, they didn't want what they could have gotten via collective bargaining. Um, they came to us after the decertification. And at the time we reached the decision that the most fair and equitable increase to give them would be the 2%, mm -hmm. that's the date we decided to go retroactive what, to. What, so, I'm sorry. Yeah. Kevin. Kevin, go ahead. So, are they currently receiving the new health care that the county offers? They are because their former collective bargaining agreement had uh, a clause in there that allowed them to get whatever the career service employees got if they determined it was better than what they got under the collective so bargaining agreement. they used the collective bargaining to get the health care that started this year, but they decertified yeah. prior to this year? Their argument is, you know. Career they service just, So they took part of it. I'm That's just correct. To get my head around this. They took part of it yeah. with the union. These, then the employees made a choice during the during a budget season when we're trying to figure out our raises during a budget season. They made this choice to, to to leave the union, to leave the bargaining unit, and now they come back six months, and, and that was their choice. Mm -hmm. They could have stayed there and got what was offered. Correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So now the the employees are coming back six months later and saying, "Forget your budget. We, you know, we made a choice, but now we we don't really like that choice." I'm all for giving them. I, I think our our county needs a pair of people well. But mm -hmm. I think there were some bad choices made by employees here about timing or, or maybe being not. And, and I don't quite understand how they got the health care and didn't get the raises. I mean, if, if you're going to use the contract this year for one thing, how don't you use it for the other thing? So to me, it seems like a mess it does, on their end. It does sound like a mess. That's Mr. why Hackman? I asked the question um, before. Yeah, I, just, just so I understand, I, I understand you're continuing if, if it was a different scale, the 356,000. I guess the question I have is, and, and this, this is just dealing with the pay scale that's in front of us. Mm -hmm. um, first, how many people are in, were in this former bargaining unit? How many 64. people are we talking about? 64? I provided 71 names right. in January, but it, 64 okay. could yeah, be right. That's fine. In, in the so, quarterly report, it says 64. All right. so if Thank we, you. What's the, using this scale, you said this would take effect pay-wise, effective July? 28th, which is the first day of a pay period. Okay. 28th so, or 27th. So I have it in here. what would be the fiscal 28. or financial impact if, if you were to, because that wouldn't be ongoing. What's ongoing is what's here. If you started this effective January 1st versus starting it when you did. Can you give me two seconds? I have that on a spreadsheet in my file. Oh, I uh -huh. thought Mr. Barron had it off the top oh. of his head. Well, if he does, I... <laughs> I'm surprised. Because he's... Yes, you're right. I am, too. Hold on just a second. I have charts that I... I'm just, I'm just curious. I, I'd like... I'd just like to know that... I think that was like Mr. Kusick's part of your question. I'm, I'm just wondering what that one-time expense is. I'm, I'm sure it is. There's an expense to everything, but... Uh, and I don't think that would be that would be ongoing, but Sorry, these are I don't know if it's necessarily the right thing to do. Or Take your time. Uh, okay, the cost of the two percent going retro to January first of yeah. twenty nineteen would be sixty nine thousand nine hundred eighty two dollars. Okay. How much? Just say it again. Sixty nine thousand nine hundred eighty two dollars. Thank you. I was just curious. Thank you. Can I Mr. Lott. Can I ask one more question, Liz? I just want to make sure, sure I got this in my head. The reason this block of employees didn't get a raise, I don't believe it was on ours. We didn't do anything no. to stop them from getting a raise at the beginning of the year. No, that's correct. Was it on the administration? stopping them from getting it raised in the beginning. Uh, no, because I believe that the administration had conversations with their representatives and explained to them that, you know, if they wanted to decertify, they could, but this is what they'd be passing up. Okay, so I, I, I'll say, Mr. Chairman, I, I'll support, you know, going forward, but I think the employees, and, and I've represented employees, and when we make mistakes, we live with it. I've 
done collective bargaining. I've made mistakes for my members and I lived with it. And I tried to correct them down the road. I believe this was something that was created by the, this group of employees. I'm all for giving them moving forward, but you know, I will not support it if we're going backwards. I think this was something that was created by the employees, you know, and not by us. And, and, and you know, I need to hear how the administration, you know, if, if it was something the employees created, I don't think we need to go back and fix it. I'm, I'm all for giving a raise moving forward because they deserve it and they should probably, you know, I'm not even arguing they didn't deserve it at the beginning of the year, but I think this is something, you know, through however they, that group of employees worked out with each other, they didn't, they didn't see the big picture here. They missed something, I think. And, and I don't think it's up to us to, to change our budget to make that up. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's where I stand. Yeah. Mr. So it, it sounds, and I just want to get this right too, because it sounds like when they, they left the collective bargaining that now they're trying to bargain but without the collective, without the, the, the union behind them. It, correct. I, I mean, in the sense that, that we met people, them and listened that, to, you know, basically what they wanted in terms of salary and benefits. Right, but isn't that why people join the union? Usually, so that they yes. Have the collective bargaining power to get more. Correct. So they got part of it, but they don't have they don't have that power of the union behind them now. No. So moving forward, when you uh, when they get these pay raises, is there any? Are they going to have to negotiate? Who's going to negotiate for them like next year? Well, they wouldn't have the authority to negotiate that's something you get when you elect a collective bargaining representative right so next year they're going to individually well I mean the career service folks don't oh I'm sorry Steve's here <laughs> Steve's so, here <laughs> so when you approve the pay scales in the budget right under the career service pay scale, there's the human service non-union pay scale that you approve. Mm -hmm. You approve the career exempt. And there are other resolutions that you approve. Mm -hmm. The way this is envisioned and the way it's presented in the resolution is that this pay scale now will be part of that, that general pay scale going forward. We couldn't put them back on the career service pay scale, which is probably going to be your next question, so I'll anticipate that, because the county had contracted pay scales, Mr. Cusick, if you remember. Mm -hmm. Then John Stofa saw the error in those ways, mm -hmm. and he increased it again. And when he did that, some pay scales were lost, mm -hmm. which caused the inequities that Ms. Kelly yeah. presented in the, first, in the first stage, because at that time, this particular group of people, these 71 to 64 people, mm -hmm. were represented the entire time by the collective bargaining agreement, or the, right. collect, the union. So that's sort of why that happened. And they were never considered in those expansions, contraction, and then expansion again. Okay. So moving forward, it'll be a little it, bit more standardized. Yeah, it, so if there's whatever, if it's a step or cost of living, yeah. it will be considered along with the career service pay scale. So these 71, 64 people, 64 people would be part of that process. They'd be folded in next year when we're doing the budget. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and we are anticipating that in the 2020 budget. Uh, I just, Mr. Hackman. Uh, Steve, before you run away, um, I, and I admit, I, I just want to make sure my head wrapped around this. Um, all right, so this is what you came up with. There's two issues at stake. One is they may not like the scale you put them on. Right. They, that's their pay scale now currently. All right, that's how they're okay. getting paid today. The, is, is a separate issue the fact that they want the date to be retroactive to January 1st as opposed to when you've decided to start them? That's, that's what I heard today, but... That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, I mean, I understand the pay is. scales because, you know what, I, I have to agree with Mr. Lott in some ways. I mean, it's going to be folded in in the next budget, and I get that, but I thought, and I could be wrong, and Mr. Kusick certainly knows how to speak for himself, but the thing is, I think I, I thought his question was, what would it cost to go back for using this scale for the, yeah, for the whole year. Yeah, I don't want to mess with the scale. You guys all worked on this. I don't want to mess with the scale. You wouldn't be messing that's with the scale. The, for the whole year, well, no, that scale I just, is 69,000. And that's what I wondered, because the scale is the scale. I, I see what you did and why you did it. My, I, I just questioned about that. My, my comment, I guess, would be um, 
and I know you probably can't tell me what the results of the election were, but uh, there's probably a few people that did not vote in favor of decertification. Mr. It wasn't a unanimous. As Ms. Kelly said, the ASME disclaimed the interest in representing. So essentially they, they agreed. Yep. This sure. is decertification. Sure. I got you. Okay. So it's mutual. Okay. So we don't know. Okay. No, we don't. We don't and, know. and we, we don't, don't even we, want to poke we, in there. Yeah, so. we don't right. know. Okay. And my other comment um, probably would be, my, my other comment probably would be that um, by decertifying, they were probably thinking that they were going to do better uh, with the non-union pay scale or, or with the county, you know. So, I mean, they did make a choice. And I, I kind of agree with Mr. Lott because, you know, I mean, I, I've done the same thing. We've, we've had things we've agreed to and we had to live with until we get it fixed. And um, maybe they got led down the wrong road or something here. You know, I, I don't know. But um, anyway. Huh. Mr. Cruz. Quick uh, question for the, the two employees that are here. Are, are you making this year the, and will you be making the same as what you currently are? From last year and, and so far this year, has your salary remained the same? My, my salary will change. Um, the only thing we're going to get is 1% because it's retroactive to um, Ju July 28th. July 28th yeah. Prior to that, and I understand Mr. Lott's uh, point of view, our pay scale didn't exist, exist because our contract was up on December 31st, 2018. So th therefore, we had no pay scale whatsoever. We didn't even know what we were being paid or what we, where we were going to go. Where were we going to go career service? You know, we understand the career service is a lot more than, as I pointed out today, $4,000 more. I understand the county doesn't want to shell out $4,000 for each employee to go on that career service. What we're asking for is just to be fair. The 2%, everyone else got the 2% in the beginning of the year. I'm, uh, we're asking that we go back. I said July or the January 22nd because that's when the NICE order went into effect. We're, we're not asking to sit here and build the county and destroy them. We understand that there's some employees that may want to stay with the union. We understand there's employees that want to leave the union. Mm -hmm. However, in our point of view, in a lot of us, we, it didn't really help us much because uh, the only thing they can uh, negotiate is salary and benefits because we're court appointed. The, the right to hire and fire us is under the president judge of the county. So there's a lot of things that we have no control over and it's, it's tough on us. You know, we do, there's probation officers now, I have a caseload of 230 people. I'm putting people on house arrest I'm doing all sorts of things, you know, going to court, ASP court, ARD court. Mm -hmm. There's many things I'm doing. Um, you know, as I said, I'm not looking to build the county. I've been here 10 years. I, I'm looking for what's fair is fair. That's all. So let me, can I just make a question? Hold, hold on a minute. Um, just one minute. Tara right. and then Ron. So, so you're saying that if, we, if you had gone over to career services, potentially the county would have paid employees $4,000 more. Now, under my scale, yes. Under your okay. Yeah. So, what you're asking is to go back to January, and if that difference is six, sixty-nine thousand nine hundred eighty-two, like you said before, and there's seventy-one employees, that's roughly a thousand dollars more for each employee. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. So, okay. On so on average, would everybody get that thousand dollars, or is it going to be like no? It's no, two percent of what they're making. Yeah. Okay, so, so it would be some would get more, some would get less, but. Correct. Basically, it would be $69,000 more. So if we did, just hypothetically, I'm just trying to think it out, that would mean we would have to amend the budget for $69,000? You, you, you always got to find the money if you're going to spend the money. So. I, can I ask just one? So you take it from another employee. Well, I don't think we take one from one no, employee I'm to just, give to that another. That was just a Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, we don't do that, that. I'm just using my particular case right. in my grade as an example. Yeah. Um, the administration would have to get the money from the general fund. I mean, and, and yes, we'd have to approve it. I mean, when budget. You, it would be a yes. budget amendment. So in the grand scheme of things. Well, in the grand scheme of things, what I'd like to ask you is this. As of right now, standing at that podium, what is it exactly you would like council to do that you think we should be doing? Because I'm hearing a couple things in my head. Maybe well, the two I'm proposal, uh, wrong. The, 
the things I, I, I have no problem with the 2% cost of living increase. Mm -hmm. What about uh, the scale? The scale is fine. They've done a great job getting us on a scale because we had no scale. Mm -hmm. We currently existed on right. the old scale that was expired. And that's how we were getting paid for six months. And you're fine with being folded into career service come 2021? I'm fine with going ahead and being able to, well, and I can't speak for every employee. Well, I'm asking you. I, I know you can't to. anymore. You know, right. What you I have to, to, is to that do. in the future that in good faith the county, you know, work with us to put us at a fair scale or a fair, fair pay grade uh, consistent with everyone else at our with what we do. Maybe a salary study needs to be done. It was supposed to be done, I think, back in 2012. Well, let me ask you, what did the, 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 the courts, do the court, you work for the courts, for the judges. That is correct. Do the judges have any say in what you get paid? I, I don't believe so, and I, I believe what happened is when they asked the president judge, and I don't want to speak out of line here, okay. um, but I believe he didn't want to, to take a position and that, and that might be because he is part of uh, the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Um, so, all right. So, so you're here today to, to say that you are advocating that going back to January. That's, that's your position. My, well, yeah. So it goes back to January right. 22nd. I just want to get the only clear reason what, I say that is because of the NICE. Get this down to and what that we're in good faith, about. we moved together, union, non union. These employees just want to be treated fair. They have a lot of work. They yeah. put up with a lot of problems, um, and they are, they're, they're really, you know. We understand, I mean, I don't think you'll find I anybody up here that doesn't I understand. understand or sympathize with county, with county employees. County. You know, we, we, we get it. We get what you do, what everybody does, and what you put in. I just wanted to clarify in my yeah, head. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask one more question? One more Sorry. question. Did you ask the county this, did you make this request of the county before coming here today? The 2%? No, the uh, Jan January, uh, January 1st, 2019. You're asking to make it retro. The two, I believe it was made. Uh, I did see a memo from, uh, that was done, that we got down from court administration that indicated that it was asked for through court admin or through, uh, and I can't speak for exactly like that I was there. But I was told that it was asked for that two percent, and the court administration or the administration said no. Um, and as I said, we we have we let them know ahead of time we were thinking about uh, decertifying. And then come January one, when it was time to do the vote, uh, essentially asked me said, "All right, fine." And none of us got to vote, so I, I don't even know what the vote would have been whether right. most of them would have wanted to stay. I just wanted to not. know that question. Thank you. I appreciate your no coming here and explaining this to us. Thank you. I gotta go. Councilwoman Zarinsky, may I speak? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, in answer to your last question, um, I would, I, Mr. Barron, uh, Kathleen McNeil Wedge, who is my deputy director of human resources, mm -hmm. and uh, Ruth, uh, R Ruth Vega Velez, I'm sorry, I was blanking there. Um, from court administration met with the employees. Now we met with a group of maybe seven or eight employees. Um, we didn't discuss a 2% increase at that point. Um, the proposal we were given was to move them to the career service scale. So if they were on a grade 26 step 6F now, mm -hmm. they wanted to move to career service grade mm -hmm. 26 step 6F. Mm -hmm. To do that for everyone in their former bargaining unit is what would have cost three hundred and fifty-six odd thousand dollars just for the first year, just to make the adjustment to get them there, mm -hmm. um, and that would have resulted in increases of anywhere from three to six thousand dollars per employee, depending. Right. Okay, so that was also inequitable. Um, that was the proposal they gave us. Mm -hmm. We didn't get any other proposal from them. We were the ones that sort of looked at, well, what it would cost to do this. And when we found out it was that expensive, and, you know, we have to look in terms of not just what these employees want, but what, what other employees might expect if we were to do 
what they asked of us. Right. But in normal collective bargaining, you would come back to the table several times. Right. So in this in this effort, it's almost like they're trying to come back to the table after you've made Yes. Yes. So they're coming back to the table and asking for something different because they didn't get what they wanted the first time, which I understand, but they don't have that power to collectively bargain anymore. You get that only when you elect a certified ele collective right. bargaining representative. That's what I, un I understand. But why did you determine that the date was uh, July 28th as, as opposed to when they're um, uh, as opposed to when they were decertified? Proximity to when council would be able to approve the pay increase. Okay, so do you believe that what they're asking for is um, unreasonable? I'm not sure my opinion really enters into it, Councilwoman Zarinsky. Because I know that's the that's the question on my mind. I guess I, I think that I, I, you don't have to tell I, me. I, I guess that's the question on my mind. I think that a lot of what Mr. Lott and Mr. McGee said is true and makes sense. What I don't really understand is why they ever chose to walk away right. from the package that was offered in, in the hopes that they could get something more that would cost so much more they would be cost prohibitive to do in one year. But was that their motivation? And I thought it was mutual. I honestly I don't. Ask me, left them too. Um, no, 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 no. That's, that, just, expedite. that's just. There was. They were all set to have an election. The handwriting was on the wall. And I think the union, okay. someone in the union at a pretty high-ranking level, made a decision. Well, you know. We'll just cost effective. Like a good, it, it, yeah. Yeah. We'll if they don't want rate. us. We, we're not going to force ourselves on them. I think it was like that at, the po at that <laughs> point. It's I don't like, actually know. I didn't talk to them, but it wasn't, it was contested it's like in the beginning. It's like an divorce or something like that. Perhaps, I, yeah. I, okay, I get it. I, I get it. I'm I, just trying to figure it out because I don't understand why if you have a union and you have collective bargaining at your, as a resource, why you would leave that and why you would think that you could get something better and then when you don't, you come back and try to get it should you know is it unreasonable what they're asking for there's just a lot of thoughts that i'm trying to weigh you i understand I mean? yeah i, I try to be fair i understand in what, what things that i choose you know i i think what the administration's put out here is pretty fair i mean they, i mean well, I'm they, not they, saying they, it's not they 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 actually put their health care in jeopardy luckily it was in the collective bargaining agreement or they would be looking for health care do we want to take care of our county workers? Absolutely. Do they have yes. Do they have very hard jobs and deal with difficult situations? Absolutely, absolutely. But it's easier when these decisions are easier when it's on the collective bargaining union to make them, and not when the ask comes absolutely. to us. Then we are the people who have to take responsibility for that about whether or not we take care of the employees. Sure. sure. So it's a different question then. It is. If you catch my drift. Yep. Any other questions? No or comments. I, I appreciate your. Or, thank you. All right. I go okay. Uh, I'd like to move this to uh, full council. Can I get a, a motion to move? Oh yes, so move. So move. All right. Okay. Okay. With no other further discussion, that will adjourn the personnel committee meeting. Thank you. Finance Committee meeting will commence immediately. The conclusion of the Personal Committee meeting has been done. First point of business per courtesy of the floor. No one here. First part of it is uh, for Mr. Zaborski, a review of control of reports. Zaborski, would you like to come up and talk about the procurement card program? <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, it's nice being first on the agenda for a change. That's nice. <laughs> and, uh, and just for your information, I have 138 days left until I'm out of here. Oh, wow. Wow. Everybody's giving us their countdown. Uh, hey, so so why? So <laughs> <laughs> right. You're not the only one, pal. <laughs> Notice I'm not saying that. Yes, indeed. I have three re yeah. reports to review. The first one was that we performed an agreed-upon procedures audit on the procurement card program, uh, the P-card program. 
The WORKS platform through the Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, handles the administrative duties associated with the Visa P-Card program. Cardholders are responsible for ensuring documentation is uploaded into WORKS for each purchase made. To perform procedures, in an, X, an Excel data file was created by exporting transaction from WORKS within the 15-month period from uh, April the 1st, 2017 to June 30th, 2018. The total number of transactions was ordered from WORKS and compared to the total transactions in the data file to ensure complete, completeness of the data file used for testing. Specific, specific fields within the WORKS inquiry screen and the data file were used to test compliance with specific purchases uh, and uh, the merchant category code MCC listing was also utilized to select the population of specific types of transactions for testing. Samples were selected at random based on the auditor's judgment. The first procedure was to determine if P-card transactions have appropriate documentation, are properly approved, and comply with the purchase and cutoff date of 2017. Our finding was that the works inquiry screen indicated that there were nine charge, nine charge transactions that did not have supporting documentation uploaded in works. Detailed testing showed an additional 20 transactions for which the uploaded documentation was not complete, appropriate, or adequate. Of 125 transactions selected for testing, there were 20 that were approved by a, a proxy authorization signature that was not on the Fiscal Affairs Authorization Signature list. Of these 20 transactions, the appropriate authorization signatures were present on the uploaded documents in 11 instances the authorized signatures were missing on the remaining nine instances of uploaded documents. While working in the work system, it was observed that the manager sign-off field uh, had entries of auto sign-off, which is automatic system-generated approval instead of an actual authorized, authorized supervisor approval in works. This was due to improper setup of eight, ca eight cardholders and involved 102 transactions. Procurement staff determined that the error corrected it, corrected it prior to the start of this engagement. It was also observed that the manager sign-up field was blank for 19 transactions. Transactions were filtered for data purchases subsequent to the year ending purchasing cutoff date of November 17, 2017. Now I, I might add that this, most of this was done in the prior administration, not under the McClure administration. The second procedure was to determine if P-card transactions are in compliance with purchasing policies with respect to but not limited to split purchases, high dollar purchases, sales tax, gift cards, weekend purchases. Based on the sample it selected, uh, we found the following. For transactions that had adequate uploaded documentation, it was determined that two of the transactions were not made from an approved vendor list. Four transactions included charges for sales tax, one uploaded invoice detail did not agree with the total charge transaction. There were a total of eight gift card transactions within the population of transactions tested. One lacked proper approval. Seven had proper approval, but the approval was not uploaded into works. None of the gift cards were for the benefit of county employees. All transactions tested had valid reasons for the purchase being made on a weekend. It was discovered that one of the transactions was inappropriate, however, as the P-card was used to pay for a $25 baggage handling of a spouse while traveling together. The county was not reimbursed by this employee who was no longer employed by the county. Within the testing period, there were 19 transactions involving air travel. Five were selected for testing. One of these was an inappropriate charge involved air travel of a spouse of an employee while traveling together. This charge was detected by Fiscal Affairs and the employee reimbursed the county for the airfare of the spouse. This transaction was is related to a transaction detailed above for a weekend purchase. The third procedure was to determine if employee meal purchases via the P-card transactions are within county reimbursement levels, that alcohol was not reimbursed, and that the transaction met the home rule location guidelines per county policy. MCCs were used to arrive at, at transactions that could be meal related for testing purposes. From this group, 15 transactions were selected for testing. Of the 15 transactions, one was a gift card purchase and one was for a non-food related item. Three transactions for meals while traveling exceeded the human, resource, human resources policy and procedures meal allowance. 
Of all transactions tested, there were a total of seven that were for meals purchased that did not involve any travel. And the fourth procedure was determine if the hotel stays were in compliance with county policy and if possible were whether government rates were obtained. The MCCs were used to select transactions for, for hotel stays. Based on the documentation uploaded in works, it cannot be determined if government rates were charged for any of the hotel stays since this type of room rate was not listed under the documentation and discounts. We conducted this and agreed upon procedures engagement in accordance with generally accepted government accounting standards. Any questions? Just one quick one. What is the meal allowance? I'm not sure what, I don't have that with me. It's, That's I don't remember what it breaks down to, but I think it's like 36 bucks. I think like 36, yeah. And, and I was going to say, in the meantime, I think the question is, do we have an updated current protocol for travel and, uh, and that is now in place yes. so this doesn't happen again? No more popcorn machines, things like that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Zaborski. Any questions? Thank you for that. Okay. okay. The next one we performed an agreed upon procedures review of the county's cash collection process in the coroner's department for five months ending May 31st, 2019. The first procedure was to review cash collection work assignments to determine if proper segregation of duties is in place. We found that the segregation, the segregation of duties provides adequate control. <coughs> the second procedure was to select a sample of five receipts and verify that they were deposited on the same day as received and that the cash check mix agrees to the validated deposit slips. Our finding was that the Satellite County Office has a policy of taking deposits to the government center on a weekly basis. Four of the five receipts were deposited between one and three business days after receipt or approval for mailing the requested report. For one of the five receipts, it could not be determined if the receipt was deposited within a week of receiving the check because the receipt date could not be determined. This deposit was made within eight days from the printed date of the check. This, not, this office does not accept cash payments all receipts tested agreed to the type of payment per the revenue register receipt and the credit card bank statement. Second procedure was for offices with bank accounts to determine if reconciliations are done monthly and reviewed by a supervisor. Uh, our Merchants Bank Service Bank account was opened in May of 2016 at Lafayette Ambassador Bank so the coroner could accept credit card payments for fees assessed for various services. Bank reconciliations are being performed by Fiscal Affairs timely for every monthly bank statement. These recommendations, reconciliations, are, are reviewed by a superior. One reconciled bank statement agrees to the book balance as stated. The reconciled bank balance is agreed to the book balance as stated in one solution as of May 31st, 2019. No checks are written against this account. The transfer for the first quarter of 2019 was recalculated based on collections for January through March. The transfer was made on April the 18th, 2019. It appears to be reasonable based on collections for the quarter. We conducted this agreed upon procedure engagement in accordance with generally accepted counting principles. Ah, oh, uh, that's, oh, that's a good, oh. I got it. Any questions besides the humor? No? Thank you, Mr. Zaborski. You want to move on to the next one, please? Yeah, the third one is a statement for a bonded. In oh, wait, oh, hold on. Ahead, hold on. Ahead. Somebody's yelling. Who is it? Go ahead. Hello. Oh, I thought you were saying my name. I couldn't hear very well. No one said your name. We just talked about the dead. Mr. The Hecker what? made a comment about Nothing. Stiff. Nothing. It's about the coroner. <laughs> it, it, it was. It's the dead. <laughs> Nobody said your name, Lori. Oh, I thought you said I was dead. Okay, bye. <laughs> Mr. Zaborski, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the final one is the statement of bond indebtedness. And there are a lot of numbers on here. I just, and this is for the period ending December 31st, 2018. This is the only item in the Home Rule Charter we are required to do. This is a statement of indebtedness. The Home Rule Charter gives us no direction on how it looks, so we follow the same format every year. It reflects the payments we made and the anticipated payments we have to do. It mimics the report of the external auditors. So you saw that report already, that's what this is. Okay. Questions? I want to take a minute to look at it. It's a, I believe we do it every year, correct? No? Yes? Yes, every year. 
No questions? Thank you, Mr. Zaborski, for your reports. Uh, I welcome the fact that you have your numbers down on how many same days left. Yes, they're exactly the same. <coughs> Any further comments for the good of the council or for the good of the meetings? I, otherwise, I'll adjourn this meeting. Meetings adjourned.